Thanks, Mark. Hello, everyone. This is on now? Yes. First and foremost, I would like to thank you, Mark, for putting up this meetup. The turnout is amazing. Lyft headquarters is just mind-blowing. We're in Las Gatos. We don't see any of this, what you see here. So this is, this is amazing, right? I am going to ask Netflix to move their headquarters to San Francisco if they can. That would be awesome. Uh, my name is Jitender. This is Garish. I'm very awkward with microphones, so I tend to dance around. So if you see my voice fade in and out, please let me know, because I can't keep my hands very stable. Like, just, it just happened. Um, OK, so let's uh, move on very quickly. We have about 30 minutes. We'll rush through some of the slides, because I want to make sure that you get an opportunity to ask us questions, because questions make the talk more interesting, not the slides. Slides are boring. Um, so I love the, the theme of the evening today. It's about productivity, which is amazing, because that's exactly what we have been trying to do at Netflix through data and data science. And we chose the topic of lineage today. So Garish and I have been working on this topic for some time now. We have another colleague who couldn't make it today, but we did a Strata talk about three months ago. It was amazing. It was amazing to hear battle stories others are facing with lineage. So it's great to hear how all of you are thinking about lineage and how we can actually combine our brains together to solve this problem. So it, this is amazing. Um, this is a little bit about our team. Um, we are a bunch of fun-loving data scientists, data engineers, visualization engineers, analytics engineers, and a lot of data folks trying to solve a lot of hard infrastructure problems. Uh, when I say infrastructure problem, it's primarily related to security and platform. In that case, it's all about operational dimensions of an infrastructure. So we look at data, we bring the data lens to understand how is data making uh, Netflix secure? How is data helping us understand the availability of our infrastructure? Also, how is data helping us understand the capacity that we need during the peak time? Uh, efficiency of infrastructure. Are we really spending uh, millions of dollars on infrastructure and understand those dollars are being invested wisely? So we're bringing an amazing lens of data to answer all those questions. Uh, and lineage plays a huge role. So that's our team. Uh, that's the title of our team. There's a little bit about our charter. I, I went through that. Uh, and, and we will talk about lineage, but just to give you a little bit of flavor on what else we do, asset inventory. I, I, I can relate to the talk that just happened prior to this talk. It's like we're building asset inventory, which is basically we take everything that infrastructure has at Netflix and we map it out. So let's start applications. We have um, 5,000 plus internal applications, corporate applications, enterprise applications. We have 150 million subscribers. Basically means we have a lot of data about all of these assets, hard, soft. We need to map it. The reason we need to map it so we understand w w what is our infrastructure look like so we can answer questions. Uh, so that's one major initiative we have been running for some time. And I hope that at some point we'll be able to do a meetup and invite all of you to understand what we're doing with asset inventory. And then the third piece is anomaly detection. I think the name itself uh, communicates that it's all about security. So. Netflix has a culture of freedom and responsibility. We don't do anything related to control. We do not have any access controls. We give you full freedom to do whatever you want in the infrastructure. But we also imagine that if your laptop got compromised, there is a possibility that there might be some unauthorized access through your, app, through your laptop in our infrastructure. We want to know that. We want to be the first team to understand that there is some unauthorized activity happening to some applications, which is unusual. You're not, you don't do that, but now your, app, your laptop is trying to access something from a remote location, accessing some sensitive information. We should be able to detect that. So that's another data application that we're building with security team. So that's the flavor of, of what we do in our team. Um, now, I think the slides didn't get updated, so I'm, I'm just going to do, I'm not going to go through my slides, but I'm going to ask you some questions. Who is thinking of data lineage as a problem in their company? Show of hands. Very few. So I wonder what are the rest of the folks doing here? Bad joke. I, I'm known for bad jokes as well. Um, OK, so let me ask you a very simple math question. Who believes lineage is a det deterministic problem to solve? Deterministic, probabilistic, anybody wants to take a guess? Is that, a, is that something we can really very confidently say that we have mapped out lineage? It's a probabilistic system, yes. The reason is that we infer 
what the lineage is. If you look at the job metadata, if you look at table metadata, if you look at access patterns, if you look at everything, we're inferring systems, we're scanning, scouring logs, looking for information that helps us link two entities. And that's exactly how we build lineage. So Garish is the main talk, I'm an opening act, so I'll, I'll just run through some of these questions very quickly. Uh, so let's do an imagination trip. What inspired us to build the lineage at Netflix? A lot of pain points our users are experiencing. So let me, let me go through some of that. Number one, imagine you're a data scientist. You're looking at a very critical metric and you're about to send out an email blast saying, this metric has declined, we need to make some product changes. But you're hesitating to pull the plug. I think you're questioning, is that metric right? Do I really believe the data that's behind this metric that has composed this metric is, is the data I can trust? At that point, you're thinking, can I actually double click on it and, and walk and traverse backwards and understand that, ah, I understand the source data, I understand the transformation of data that has happened through multiple stages, I understand the logic, the data science behind it. At that point, I'll feel 100% confident that I can send that email and ask my product managers to change product or change the course of the product or maybe change the course of the business. At that point, you're asking like, I wish I had an end-to-end -end linear system in place. So that's one story. Um, the second story is about software engineers. Netflix has, uh, you probably know, I, as I said, like thousands of microservices. And, and those microservices are generating logs, right? And we use those logs to understand the behavior of our subscribers so we can actually build better recommendation system, better personalization system. Now you're in charge of a critical microservice and you're wondering, I'm about to change some logic in my microservice and I think that microservice is most likely going to impact the shape of the data and it might impact the type of the data. I don't know, but I don't know who is using the data I'm publishing. You wanna know downstream which applications or which analytical systems, reports, dashboard, machine learning models, online, offline, are using my data. You wanna know that so that you feel confident if I make that push to production, downstream users are not impacted and I'm not battling a fire. So you are also asking for a linear system end-to-end -end that maps out all data artifacts that are at in your company. So that's the second use case. The third use case is related to reliability engineer. Anybody who is uh, doing anything remotely to do with reliability of the platform or infrastructure? There's one gentleman here. So I can imagine you can relate to this use case. Uh, you, you have built a very good system, but then your users are always coming and telling you is that I wish your, your system can predict when my workload is going to finish. Or your, your user asking other questions around like, my job is stuck. Like, it, it finishes at 9 a.m. every day. It's not finishing at 9 a.m. today. What happened? They're asking you all those questions. And you're wondering, okay, how do you find that out? Why this critical workload is stuck? You want to know this critical load has, critical workload has a dependency on other workloads that have not finished yet. And in that case, again, as a reliability engineer, you're thinking, like, I really believe that I can map out the job lineage in my system. So I know there are millions of jobs running, and I can very confidently predict when this job is going to finish because I can, I can very quickly write a service that is trying to understand what other workloads are stuck above stream. Right? So these are three user stories which will paint a very good vision why Lineage is such a critical system in an infrastructure. And you can always let me know if I'm speaking very fast because I always get nervous in front of so many people so I speak very fast. Um, so. Those are all the use cases inspired lineage. Uh, does anyone do anything to do with incidents like any data issues? Uh, there is this gentleman here. So that's also, we, we deal a lot with incidents. Um, so at that point, we need to do detection and data cleansing. And same, when you do data cleansing, you need a lineage. So there are tons of stories like that. Retention, because we want to understand key data sets so we can build a better DR system. Cost attribution, I talked about, we focus on efficiency, so cost attribution plays a huge role uh, in, in understand, or lineage plays a huge role in attributing cost to various data artifacts in our system, and also platform reliability. Of course, data integrity is, is the paramount to understanding data lineage. So these are all uh, the systems. 
very little about freedom and responsibility culture at Netflix. Who has heard this term FNR, or freedom and responsibility? Okay, very quickly, it's all about at Netflix is choose your own adventure. If you have an idea that you think is going to make billion dollar for Netflix, go build that. Netflix really empowers you to take the freedom. But you know with great freedom comes great responsibility. We also want to make sure that you're responsible. You're exercising good judgment, right? It's, it, and and I'll, I'll, let me actually walk you through that. So it's, it's all about you don't need to go fill out 10 forms, go through a project management office or procurement or like, I need to do this. Can I get this system here? Can I spin up this cluster here? Can I install this application here? No, just go do it. Literally, just go do it. Spin up a cluster. I mean, we have people come to us. I spun up a 100-node cluster here. That is Cassandra. I need to install Elasticsearch. Yeah, just go do it. Because that's the level of trust we have in our employees. Because that is what made Netflix great. At the same time, we also want to make sure that uh, I don't have this here. But there's a term we use at Netflix called uh, variance without value, which is where the judgment come in. Like variance without value. If you think about it, it's all about let's not do everything that this beautiful world has to offer, let's try to, let's try to identify some paved paths so that you don't have to really trailblaze every time you think about a new solution. So these are some of the key tenets of our culture because this really allows us to move very fast. It allows us to scale complexity and we take pride at Netflix in scaling complexity. Uh, and of course, you have to exercise good judgment. You just don't want to have variance without value. Okay, so with that, let me explain you. Our landscape is very complex because I just walked you through FNR, freedom and responsibility. So starting with top left, that's our microservices architecture. We have a ton of microservices. And uh, those microservices are generating petabytes of, of log, trillions of events. Those events are being transported through a real-time infrastructure called Keystone. And then uh, a lot of data engineers and data uh, scientists are writing streaming applications, transforming, transporting all of that data. And you can imagine there are multiple default sinks in place in the storage space, is including Cassandra, Elasticsearch, MySQL, Postgres. Of course, our data warehouse is backed by Amazon S3. If you look at the bottom of it, we have, uh, I, I mentioned that we have corporate applications, we have enterprise applications. So enterprise applications like uh, Google G Suite, Workday and other applications, so we need to move data from them as well. So we have some batch workloads in place. So in a nutshell, that's our very complicated data landscape. Uh, and we have um, thousands and thousands of uh, ETL pipelines that transport data every day. And then at, at, and you can imagine the, the topmost layer is all about access layer. So you can do interactive queries. You can build Jupyter notebooks, your machine learning models offline, online. A uh, lot of interactive queries. So this is our infrastructure. Now imagine starting a linear journey in a complex environment like this. We have to make sure that we look at every data artifact that's generated at the very left and then map it back to the every data artifact that is being generated or used at the right. So that's our, that's our story. That, and then now uh, Rich is going to go a little bit deeper into some of the design challenges and how we addressed it. But a very high level, um, if you were to think about how we thought about lineage, if you remember the previous slide, microservice generating data so we can say, OK, a microservice becomes a node or a vertex. And then that microservice connects to Kafka topic. And that Kafka topic has a default sync. That's a table. And there is a job that moves data from that table to a report. So this allows us to build a lineage graph. So this is a conceptual graph. Now, if you extend that further, another application talks through that previous application. And then this allows us to continue to uh, incrementally build out the lineage, lineage graph. Um, that's. And at the very bottom, you can think that we can actually map all artifacts, including jobs. So we can see this job depends on this job, and this job is creating this workflow. So we can map out every data artifact. With that, let me actually invite Girish to now take you through the next set of uh, slides that go more deeper into lineage. Thank you, Jitendra. All right. So as we cover this diverse landscape and we build towards our long-term vision of capturing lineage of various data artifacts through the system, we run into quite a few challenges. So the first one is the diverse data landscape itself. And this is a very high problem, not just technically, because it's also the huge 
cross-functional effort involved in getting various platforms on board, and we are moving beyond the traditional data warehouse. We are talking about Cassandra, Elasticsearch, and other platforms. And the second challenge we face is the platform evolution, right? Like, as we onboard new platforms, how do we make this integration easier? And for the existing platforms, how do we make sure that the upgrade cycles they go through do not break our existing systems and break the existing lineage data? And the third set of challenges, as we onboard new platforms, we get data in various uh, granularity. For example, Cassandra has column families, Elasticsearch has indices, we have tables and jobs, and the metadata about these artifacts is also at various granularity. And we need to map out all of these artifacts and the metadata to a generic data model, but still maintain enough context so that we can join back to the original data set if needed. So as we think through these challenges, I think it's uh, important for us to come up with a few guiding principles that helps us build a mindset with, uh, that helps us build this reliable lineage system. And the first is ensure data coverage, right? So the quality of the data is very important, and without good data coverage, the system is not really useful. And this is one of the big challenges because we don't really know what we don't know. And of course, one simple example would be like, users come and tell us, okay, there is a gap in the data system, and that's how we know, but that's not ideal. We need to build proactively, validate our data sets to make sure the coverage is good. And one example here is what we did with S3 Warehouse, where we use our S3 access logs, where we have logs of every get and put. We reverse map that to a logical table and use the metadata to come up with the logical job names that write and read from those objects. And that's where we build the relationships and we can use that to compare with the lineage data we have and see what are those gaps and plug those gaps. And the second one is uh, make sure that we have a seamless integration enabled for the platforms to come on board uh, easily. And we can do this by defining a good schema for the payload that we need on the lineage system and encourage platforms to instrument this payload because to be honest, the platform owners are the best people to know what happens on the system and how to capture lineage on the system. And they also have good control over how the platform evolves and any of those changes making, uh, any, any of those changes breaking the lineage data. So instrumentation and schema, that's critical to have a good system. And then the third is coming up with a generic data model because this is useful in integrating with our lineage service, which is basically the graph database backed service. And how do we make sure that the data model we build uh, enables these graph database loaders to seamlessly integrate the new data sets we add? I'll cover a little bit about uh, how we achieve data coverage. At a high level, we have two patterns, which is the data gets pushed to us, and this is the most preferred approach. In this case, we have our platforms uh, instrumenting lineage for us, and we do that with some of our compute engines like Presto, and data movement tools, and reporting tools. This is really ideal because we don't really have to worry about uh, what gaps we might introduce by trying to parse the logs. The platform gives us the data, and we're good with it. The second approach is it's not practical for all the platforms to instrument this data for us. So we go with ingestion scripts where we parse logs and metadata to enumerate various jobs and scripts that happen on those computing platforms. And sometimes we have to parse plan info or queries if they are simple queries. With this, we can extract the table names, the columns used, and sometimes even the job metadata associated with it. So with that, uh, I'll briefly go over the lineage uh, data flow. So like I talked about, uh, we have our ingestion layer where we collect the various artifacts and the associated metadata. And then once, uh, like we saw earlier, these artifacts and metadata come with various granularity. So we go through a conformance process to make sure they map to a generic data model where we map these artifacts to high level categories and bring in relevant metadata. We also uh, generate IDs when those unique IDs are not available as part of the platform data. And once we have these uh, data set uh, go through the conformance process, we then load this to a generic data model, which is simply edges and vertices. And each of those vertices and edges have their own properties, and the properties is a very generic metadata, like key value pair. 
and oh, this gives us the flexibility to load uh, any artif any metadata for these artifacts as and when needed depending on the business use case and with this the loaders really have a good flexibility in to pick up any subgraphs of the whole graph data set as needed for example if we just need the job workflow lineage uh, the loaders can pick up that particular subgraph load it to a graph database and the lineage service can serve the specific use case for SLA service. If you're interested in job and data relationship, we can extract that part from the graph data model we have and load that part to service other use cases like efficiency dashboard. With that, uh, we'll go over some of the use cases at a high level and understand how Lineage can help us make better decisions in addressing these use cases. So reliability. So we talked about this briefly earlier. So SLA recommendation is, uh, for example, if we have a job and we can look at the historical stats and like the business needs and define an SLA. But with Lineage in mind, we also have the context of how upstream jobs evolve and how their SLAs change. And with that, we can be more realistic about what a realistic SLA is for a downstream job. And with ongoing monitoring of these jobs, uh, whenever we see that there are upstream job failures or upstream job delays, we can notify downstream processes about any potential SLA miss. And the third is, it's basically about like giving developers uh, or users of the data good context on like why certain things are failing. For example, if there's an upstream job failure and the downstream jobs are waiting on dependencies, then we can give that context in the error emails and alerts so the developers are aware of what's happening and take action accordingly. On another use case is we might have data corruption happen at some high level job and then uh, all the downstream jobs could fail or use corrupt data. So this is where we can use that context and let the downstream users know. Anomaly detection is another example where maybe all of a sudden there is a job which starts ingesting like 2x or 3x amounts of data. And this is not going to affect just that job, but all the other jobs downstream as well in terms of the job duration or maybe even in terms of the data change they might see. So this is another use case where Lineage is really useful in proactively uh, notifying those users about any upstream changes. So data visibility is another critical piece where Lineage can play an important role. Business use cases change all the time, and it needs us to make changes to schema, deprecate old tables, or even rename columns or delete columns. And in some cases, the semantics of the data in those columns can change. And sometimes we would have to go and restate historical data for practical reasons or for any data issues. With this, uh, it's not just that data set that's going to be affected, and not just the immediate consumers of this data set, but the entire subgraph of this data set. And uh, it's very important to know that a critical report depends indirectly on this data set because that helps the owners of this data set understand the impact of any of this change. And also the, the breadth of this subgraph tells us like how long this change is going to take basically because of the number of stakeholders involved. So that helps us make uh, informed decisions about any of the schema changes we are going to make, not just with this data set and immediate downstream in mind, but the entire subgraph of all the data sets that goes downstream to this. Efficiency is another important aspect where Lineage plays a critical role, right? So we have uh, cost attributes at the job level and the table level, and that is good to know. But with Lineage, we can go a step further. For example, let's say we build a report for analysis, and uh, this uh, costs us some amount of money to manage the report and the jobs that generate the report. But this is just the cost of that particular report and not the true cost. So with Lineage, we can go back all the way upstream, and we have the attributes of cost all the way upstream to figure out like what's the cost of the entire pipeline. And that's the true cost of doing this analysis and comparing that with the business impact it has makes us uh, have this informed decision on whether this analysis is uh, useful related to the cost and the business impact. Retention is another example where uh, we have a lot of uh, data tables that uh, we store for longer duration just in case we need it. But with Lineage, we can understand that like we have a few top level core data sets that we can use and regenerate any of these downstream data sets as needed with a reasonable cost because we have visibility into the cost as well. So this helps us maintain only a uh, few core data sets for longer duration, but clean up storage, clean up uh, rest of the data sets and save on the retention 
or storage cost. Uh, disaster recovery is another area which is similar where we can have some of the core data sets retained for uh, disaster recovery purposes, but not really the entire data ecosystem stored back in for disaster recovery. Um, so this is uh, definitely another use case where uh, lineage plays a critical role. So with that, uh, I think we have a lot of other exciting opportunities, not just on the team, but uh, at Netflix in general. Please visit our job site. And we also have a uh, blog talking about lineage in particular and in general about our team. So visit our Netflix tech blog site. Thank you. I, I think we do have some time for Q&A, so if you have some questions you want to test on us. Uh, by the way, this is great. Quick question on, uh, obviously you did not build this uh, before you had 5,000 apps, so this probably was built somewhere in between. Uh, how was that journey of sort of converting the existing apps to be able to push some metadata information into this system to get the lineage out? And, and how is it with newer apps? Is this a recommended approach that, hey, before you start building an app, make sure that you do this? Right. Yeah, so to answer that, we are still not done. So <laughs> we have a long way to go. And yes, we started with the traditional warehouse. And there, even there, like Spark, we don't have instrumentation today, right? So none of the platforms started off with instrumentation, right? Wherever it was easy, the platforms helped us, but we are still struggling with those, and that's a huge challenge for us. Like we are going through like parsing parts or like Spark plans, which is not easy for us. And going forward, like I said earlier, we are pushing towards uh, as we get these new platforms on board, we are pushing towards instrumentation, and we are pushing towards a schema for the payload where we are providing the business use case as to how critical lineage data is and giving them the carrot approach where we say like, okay, this is useful for you and not just us by providing this data to us. Yeah, I think that the last, sorry, the, the last piece is very critical. We build one data and one door, one data was good enough for us to justify there are enough business use cases. And if you look at security, privacy, efficiency, especially efficiency at Netflix scale, like if you drop a core table that's petabyte, that's a million dollar savings. So it's, it's not a small change. It's like it, in, in aggregate, all these things add up. So when we started demonstrating value, there was, as, as Gurish talked about, some of the two patterns like push versus pull. Initially, we were doing all the heavy lifting. But over time, we can actually say like, you know some of this, we don't need to do that if we can better instrument our systems and we have better tooling in place. So that's how they, the value was clear, and as a result, the investment started to flow. Because now any new investment is immediately justifiable by savings from either a privacy point of view or from efficiency point of view. You had a follow up, or, but I want to make, did anybody else has a question? First of all, thank you for your presentation. I wonder like how you uh, build a lineage graph. I think you mentioned like you uh, uh, parsed the S3 access log, like a pool model, you pull the data in and then you analyze it and then build a graph. There should be some case that those information probably not available. Like do you also like ask other external entity to push the graph inform lineage information into you? Like if that is the case, what will be the challenge while doing that? So yeah, that's a good question because S3 access log, like I said, it was just like a plugging the gap solution for us. It's more of a validation because uh, like you said, we are parsing the data and th there are always gaps, right? So that was the S3 access logs to plug those gaps. But uh, for example, the other platforms we are onboarding like Elasticsearch and Cassandra, we have those challenges. Like we basically need usage logs and they don't have good logging of like how that usage is tracked. And it could be just in some sort of like Apache logs, for example, right? So we need to work with the platform systems to make sure that they have better ways of instrumentation and pushing them towards instrumentation where they can give us those lineage relationships. Because they do have all of this data, right? It's just the work they have to do to get that to us. Instead, we will be doing, if they don't do it, we will have to do the parsing and all of that. Thank you. We'll be we'll be back there. Uh, shameless plug is, is like we are hiring. 